Welcome to Age of Noob everyone, and let's talk about the upcoming changes coming soon to Age of Empires 4 that we were able to observe in the ranked beta that is currently running on an invite basis. There are a ton of quality of life features that we've all been waiting for, so let's dive right in. Number 1. Hotkeys are finally finally improved significantly. You can now cycle through pretty much every single building you can think of. Hence, we no longer have to control group our production buildings, blacksmiths, universities, and so on, as we can assign individual keys to each one of them. Furthermore, you can use any combination of control, alt, shift, or buttons as well, so you can easily move to whichever building you want in whatever combo you're most comfortable with. Once again, this is something that was bafflingly omitted in the release version of the game, which was outrageous for a modern RTS to not have. But hey, at least it's finally coming, even if it's late to the party. Also, you can now bind mouse keys to anything as well, so a lot of players will rejoice that they no longer have to use third-party software to bind additional buttons on their mice for further customization. It's funny I even have to mention this as a feature, but unfortunately, it's not possible in the current patch of the game to bind any additional mouse keys. One thing that I have to mention that is the final missing piece is that the grid system for building structures or commanding your units is still unchanged, so we're stuck with that for now. We don't know if this will be changed in the future or not, but it's still a very important customization option that a lot of players, including myself, are still waiting on. Once this is also fixed, we can happily say that the hotkey customization in Age of Empires 4 is going to be on par with a game that was released in the 90s. Number 2. We will finally be able to see the map fully revealed after the game has concluded. Hence, another inexplicable omission is now finally fixed and I've tested this a few times to be sure. Keep in mind that you can also click on continue, look at the stats and click back to see the game again, which is fantastic. Moreover, the in-game chat will also be revealed in the chat box at the end screen as well. Though this is almost irrelevant as the chat is almost always because for the life simply filter system for their chat. And finally, there's an added button in the custom game menu that reads Reveal on Elimination, which is a great feature if you're playing casually with friends and you'd like them to see the map if they've been eliminated and the team game is still going on. Obviously, you'll want this turned off by default on random custom games with strangers as they might otherwise leak information to their allies during the game. Number 3. We now have the option in the settings to toggle exclusive control groups. Once again, this is yet another annoying thing that we had to deal with in the game, so when you turn this option on, control groups will always override previously controlled group units. Previously, when we set the villager to 1 and the spearman to 2, we had to do some keyboard gymnastics to get rid of those if we wanted to set those units to something else. Thankfully, with this option turned on now, you can set the villager to 1, the spearman to 2, then again the spearman to 1 without any issues. The spearman will no longer hold on to the 2 control group and the villager will lose his control group entirely. Great change. Number 4. The stats on the unit cards finally showcase the base value plus the upgrades separately. This is another fantastic visual change, as we had to previously memorize all HPs, attack damage, and armors for each unit, then calculate whatever applicable upgrades they may have gotten on the fly. That's a lot of math and mental power wasted for no reason. Thankfully, we can clearly see the upgrades now with a different color, so checking stats just got significantly better overall. Number 5. Global Freaking Q is also finally here. You can only toggle it via its dedicated hotkey, which is kind of weird, but it works, so I won't complain. That said, its default position is in the top right, which I honestly think is a bad spot. Having the option to customize where the global queue can be seen would have been fantastic, as I'd much rather have it either on the bottom left corner of the game or get rid of the absolutely useless win conditions on the top left and have it there instead. Regardless, this is a great step forward, and you can click, control click, and shift click on the global queue icons to interact with them of course. Number 6. Lo and behold, we can now patrol with our military units. Sadly, there is still no split formation button available, but I'll take the win wherever I can. As expected, it'll be a part of the grid system for its hotkey and its behavior is identical to pretty much what you're already used to in previous Age of Empires games. Number 7. A lot of you may not have cared or even realized that the biome section dropdown was bugged, and I noticed that they are finally fixed and we can properly see what each biome is meant to represent. The community, myself included, have reported this issue so many times in almost every build since the original beta, but they released the game without fixing it anyway. Well, it's now finally fixed and it's the type of polish that won't turn off new players when they play around with the map settings. Thank you, Relic. Number 8, and this addition is more important as we now get a random Civ option as a selection. This was one of the long list of features that were not included in the release game for some reason, but they have finally added this feature and it works as intended. 
but can we please choose our colors relic? I'm not sure why this was also not included, but sorry friends, it's still not here. We'll all still play in either blue or red for whatever reason. Number 9. The ranked seasons are now in beta testing and will be released soon, but I'll cover this exclusively in tomorrow's video in detail, so stay tuned for that. There are other changes here and there, such as the demo ships bug being fixed, but I will cover those once the patch is officially released, as the current beta build of the game is a weird mix of a few different versions. There's no point in analyzing units in a beta that's clearly not release ready. Well, that's pretty much all you need to know about the upcoming huge patch for Age of Empires 4. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these changes and whether or not you'll be playing on the ranked ladder. As mentioned before, stay tuned for tomorrow's video on the ranked system specifically as well, so be sure to be subscribed to not miss out on any future Age of Empires content. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to set up your new hotkeys in the new patch, and see you all in the next one.